Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting live from Los Angeles, um, back in LA for a while. Um, happy to be connecting with all of you. Um, I'm back in my old studio, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get rid of a couple of technical difficulties that we have and solve these things so I can broadcast and use the podcast. I'm not fully equipped at this moment, but uh, hopefully by next Wednesday, we're all ready to go. So the topic of this week, uh, my dear sister Hilde asked me if I would talk about shame. So guilt and shame, we can talk about that today. In a moment, let me see if we have someone here in the chat box. Okay. All right. Um, cool. Let's start with a short meditation. Uh, those, most of you been with me and uh, you know the drill. So basically, all we need to do is divert our attention inwards towards the source, diverting our attention towards by looking inwards, by shifting the attention from the outside to inside. And you follow the stream of your thoughts and you look within yourself. And you look for that which is observing, that which is here, that which is aware. What is it that inside you is always here? Look for that. Take your attention inside and dive within. It's just a shift of attention. That's all it is. You shift your attention inwards. You look inside yourself. Look for that which inside you doesn't change. That which is watching. That which is aware. That which is always here. And if you follow the stream of your thoughts, if you have thoughts, then everything becomes quiet. You follow the stream of the thoughts towards its origin. Where do they come from? And everything becomes quiet. Like return to silence. Return to silence.
You're simply here and you're allowing life to be without trying to control anything or forcing anything. Just let things flow. You're in a non-engaged state. There's no engagement. So just relax, allow things to come and go while your attention is on one point and you're not entertaining movement. You're simply here.
simply here. Exercising your natural state. Slowly, slowly come back. Come back here. Hi, Lena. How are you? Nice to see you. Welcome. Hi. Hello, Heinz. Nice seeing you. And Linda. Hi, Linda. Long time no see. Yeah, it's my lucky day. We have both shadis here too. So it's kind of <laughs> Kind of strange being back here in my old studio and broadcasting from here. <laughs> in a way, it feels like nothing's changed and there's been no time as if like it didn't exist, this migration. I'm back at the same place and in a kind of way, it's kind of so strange. So it's an interesting experience happening simultaneously. And it's like traveling into dimensions. So it's 
So let's talk about, first of all, is anybody has anything to say? you have anything, any comments, any realizations, anything has happened in past couple of weeks since the last time we've seen each other or few past weeks. Uh, anybody wanna share anything or you wanna wait till later? All right, so let's talk about the subject of shame and guilt. Uh, can everyone hear me? I just want to make sure that the speaker is working. Okay, we're good. Yeah. So naturally, we're going through different experiences in life, and there are different times that we're going to be doing things that, or an action, or a certain situation, you do something. Uh, you may find it uncharacteristic. It's not who you are or who you believe that you are or not. And that's the result of that, you're going to be shameful. And uh, your mind's going to come and or people going to shame you or give you a feeling of guilt. And that's a very normal and natural thing. That's gonna happen basically for every human being, unless you're completely a narcissist and very self-absorbed in always feeling righteous, you may not be experiencing it, but pretty much every normal human being on this planet is gonna be experiencing a level of shame and guilt for something that has happened or you've done. And um, I would say that I would take it as a sign of, as a good sign. You know, I won't look at it as a bad sign necessarily because it represents the fact that you're human. Uh, it also represents the fact that you have your flaws. And on top of it, it still represents that you're identifying with the body-mind mechanism. You're identifying with the doer. You think you're someone who's doing things. And that's a part of this awakening to the point that you're digging in and you're digging in and you're going deeper within yourself until you come to this realization that there is really no doer. But that is the final understanding. It takes time for a lot of us to get to that point. So to get to that point, you have to go through a lot of different layers. And th there's a lot of ups and downs to it. There's a lot of self-doubt, self-shame, self. Um, that's why they call it self-realization, to realize the self, to realize the part of yourself, which is eternal, the part of yourself, which is untainted, the part of yourself, which is clean. It's never been um, stained. So, and this part of you is simply the awareness. It's the one who's hearing what I'm saying right now. It's the one which is aware. There's this awareness. Something is aware. Something's awake. Something here is watching. Something comes and says that I feel ashamed of my thoughts or desires or the kind of kooky stuff I do in my private, when I'm, privately alone, I do some things or whatever I do. 
and then I feel shameful of it for my judgments or my acts or the kind of things have happened. So this is a part that gets tricky because the more awake you become, the more you're waking up to the self, the more like the shadows and the dark parts of yourself are becoming visible. You're starting to tune in and, and uh, noticing things. So, and if you are sincere and uh, if you are able to go beyond your ego, you're really working on yourself, you're really paying attention you go through this phase that you're blaming other people. So you're, and this is a trap a lot of spiritual seekers fall into it, that you're too aware, you're too awake, you're too holy, you're too good. You've become vegetarian, you don't drink, you don't smoke, uh, you have very little sexual thoughts, you meditate a lot, um, you do yoga, you do all the right things, and then your ego comes and you think you're better than others. And now you start to point finger at them how sleepy, how unconscious they are. So it, this is a phase. We all go through that. Or majority of spiritual seekers, I would say 99% or more go through that phase that you're righteous, you're better, and the rest of the world is sleepy. And hopefully if you go beyond that stage, you pass that, then you are looking at yourself, you're watching yourself, you're not really putting your finger on other people, uh, and you're paying attention to where you're at with yourself. So then also, depending on your background, where you come from, like what kind of childhood you had, how much they shamed you or how much they made you feel guilty, whether it's most of the time it's with your sexuality, uh, the times with your sex, of what you are, whether you're a girl, uh, and especially from the old days, uh, girls being shamed uh, or they're being expected to act like a lady or whatever, and they shouldn't be doing this, shouldn't be doing that, saying this, saying that. So they're being put down. Uh, today, things have changed a lot, but back in the day, that's how it was. And so you were always, you already had a little bit of a second class citizen status because you were a woman. And uh, so you were one step down already. So that's already creates some kind of guilt and shame because you're not a boy, you're a girl. So, so it's kind of like built in already. And I'm not talking about newer generations because things have changed, but I'm talking about a lot of people over age 40 and older, and you know the upbringing and the total idea of the society of how they look at girls or women. So, but back in what we were talking about, you're waking up, you're, you're becoming self-aware, you're working on yourself, and you have passed this stage of pointing finger at other people, which is already pretty much an advanced, relatively an advanced place. Now you're working on yourself. Now, while you're working on yourself, you also can get caught into another trap of which I meet a lot of people that they're, they're 
were going through this process of doing psychotherapy and taking all these, whether working with a, a psychiatrist or a therapist or doing a lot of workshops that you're working on yourself. And the problem is a lot of these things take you to your past and make you process your past traumas or the events that have happened. Now you can get caught into that too and keep going and going and going and do a number of years of doing psychotherapy. It could be under any name uh, or doing self-motivating -motiv courses or um, workshops and uh, but then get caught into this place of blaming yourself or shaming yourself or feeling guilty about the things you've done or doing now or in the past. Once you go through this process, and if we're lucky or if it's meant to be, and then coming to this other teaching, coming to a different level of understanding. And now this is a lot deeper, it's a lot more advanced because you are going to the very fundamentals and very basics of the idea of who you are. You're questioning, who am I? Now, in this process of really questioning, who am I? Who is this person? Again, this is deep. This is advanced because we're talking about going to arriving at a place that now the attention is turning inwards and you're asking a really fundamental question who am i who is this me who is this mechanism that is thinking and has got an identity he or she thinks it's a person identifying to the mechanism, the body and the mind, the mechanism that is functioning. And it's consciousness identifying with it. it means picking up an identity of a person, of a human being picking up an identity that you are someone, okay? You are somebody, you are a person, separated from everything else. You are a person. This is how you've been experiencing life from childhood, that you are someone capable of your own decisions and you're making right and wrong decisions and when you're making the right decision pride comes and you're patting yourself that you did it and you're bold enough to put your finger at other people that they're screwed up and they're lost and if they did this if they did that they would have been in a much better place. So as the awareness coming in, and if you are lucky and you come to this, this path, this particular teaching, if your ears are sharp and it's like meant to be, to come to this level, this type of understanding, that you are questioning your own existence as a separate being 
in separation that is there a me independently the way i am that is able to make its own decisions it's got its own free will therefore when it's making mistakes or doing something shameful is ashamed of itself so when it really screws up the awareness has come to a point that it shames itself and then when it does something really good and succeeds the pride is there now this is the very pivotal place because to cross the bridge to go to the other side means that now you're at the place that if your ears are open, your eyes are open, your heart has opened up and you are willing, maybe at this place, you can go through a transformation. You can go to the next level by really questioning is there a separate me? Is there a me in who's capable of calling its own shots? Examining that, really getting to that, because it gets challenging, it's scary. All the indications, everything which is here is supporting this idea everything is supporting that there's a you separated from everything else all the evidence is supporting it in the beginning it appears to be that way within how could you be making decisions on your own separated from the entire existence how could that be if you dive into it and willing to put your prejudice away and everything they've taught to you and questioning everything that you've been taught up to this po point you're sincerely questioning it willing to take these glasses off and put another pair of glasses to look at something that you may have never thought or the thought may have come at points in your life that is it just destiny am i programmed to be doing everything i'm doing am i just an appearance in this life it appears to be it's an object which is following its program it's like a computer has been pre-programmed to do everything it has to do in this life and could it be that something greater that the creator god consciousness yahweh the grand kahuna is experiencing and living life through this mechanism to this unit could that be so if we're we're entertaining the idea so if that's the case that you're completely pre-programmed based on your genetic makeup your dna 
your where you were born, where you landed, your conditioning, whether you were conditioned in a European mindset of lifestyle or in a in the Islamic fundamentalist mindset or in Africa or in South America or in China or way of thinking or maybe in um, the islands or whatever whatever mindset conditioning that you have been brought up you have to understand that you're going to be acting according to your genetics your parents where you were born where you grew up what language what culture what religion you were exposed to the way of thinking of that environment is going to shape the way you're acting. So that's not something you've chosen. This has nothing to do with your free will. This is where you landed. You landed with particular parents. You landed with certain genetics. You may have come into a very athletic body. Uh, you may have come in a body which is ill or it's genetically designed to decay or have issues. Maybe you were born paralyzed or blind. Maybe at age like 10 or 12, you got in a car accident and you became paralyzed or whatever happened. I mean, there's certainly things that happen in life that you are not in control of it at all and you have nothing to say or you were born in a certain way and you have, you have no recollection. You can come and say you have created it at one point in life that you were born in a certain way and that was what you decided to do in this life. Okay, that's great. It's a great idea. But if you're born with a degenerative disease or you were born paralyzed, you're definitely not very happy about it. You can't come and say, oh, I, choose, I chose this to come in this life blind. And or paralyzed. So I don't buy that. I'm sorry. You know, if I have come into this life with some health issue or mental issue or whatever, uh, yeah, you have to deal with it all of your life. And I can attach it to this story that this is what I've chosen to come to. And yeah, I mean, it could be very well true, but I don't know it consciously in this life of any of these things that where I was before I was born and why I chose the parents I chose and I landed into this dimension from that portal I just know I'm here. And here's got a lot of its own things to figure out. And all these years that have gone by, there's still a lot I don't understand, a lot I don't know. It is a mystery. It keeps revealing itself. You keep finding new things about yourself. You keep finding yourself capable of doing things you had no idea you can do or learning things or whether it's positive or negative or it's destructive or it's constructive and you discover these things and as you're discovering everything is changing because your body is changing your psyche is changing your emotions changing your everything around you is changing so you're reacting accordingly to what is going on. But a lot of it has to do with your body and your mind and your emotions and a lot of the stuff you have no control over. So you're 
or aware of a mechanism which is changing constantly to something else. You know, you're all of a sudden you come and say, yeah, I used to be able to sleep, but now I can't sleep anymore. I used to be able to eat this and this, and now I can't eat any of them anymore. Or, you know, I used to be able to be up till three in the morning with a lot of energy. Now I'm really tired at 10 o'clock at night. So things are changing inside you all the time and you don't have any control over it. And you're trying to figure that, figure that out and then there's the world and you have to make a living in the world. And in the world, you may feel lonely and you want to have a partner and you want to have a community and you want to have a sense of belonging to something. So a lot of things changing all the time and you're in this world and trying to figure these things out. And in the meantime, you're trying to be a good citizen, be a good dad, mom, sister, uh, daughter, whatever, and wife, husband. There's a lot. Just being alive on this planet, there's, there's a lot. So I don't think if anyone on their own capable of making their own free will choices, decisions, there's no way they can even make it to age 40, even 30, I don't think. You know, is because you have to have something much bigger than you carrying you to get you to this point. There's too many minds out there on the field that you can walk on and they can blow up and you lose a limb or arm or whatever. Something much bigger has to be carrying you. Too many times you're on your phone driving, not paying attention. Too many times a lot of different little things can happen that at any moment you can just slip or you fall down the stairs and you break your neck, you get in a car accident and die. So many different elements are out there that can knock you out at any moment. And you have no control over any of it. And no idea what's going on. Something is carrying us bigger. Something is pulling the strings. Something is providing and giving us what we need. You got to start seeing that. Paying attention to that, that there is something bigger. Something way bigger is there. That thing, and it's not very difficult. You just have to get out of your own way. In a way, you have to just kind of like take, take these glasses out from one dimensional thinking or one dimensional looking and then entertaining the possibility of what if I don't have any free will? What if there's, yeah, I make the decisions, but where do these decisions come from? And the results based on the decisions I'm making certain results coming, certain consequences happening, and looking at it and seeing where these desires, these thoughts, these inspirations come from. Where do they come from? How come I, got all, I get all these ideas and some of them I pick up, but the rest of them I don't? And one of them takes me. The rest doesn't do anything. So something is much bigger is at work and it's running the mechanism 
protecting the mechanism. So if you're willing to go deeper and take a deeper look at it, you're going in, you're looking inside, and you're questioning, who am I? And in that, you may get glimpses because you have got glimpses of this much bigger side of yourself. You wouldn't be here if you did not. You have had glimpses of it, of something much bigger something very majestic, something really present, something which is here all the time, something that it really, you're deriving your energy and your juice from because you're feeling the presence, the drive, the force, life, feeling it, really feeling it. And then you're starting to realize I'm not the one who's doing these things. Something bigger than me is operating through me and wants to do something. It wants to do something for someone, give something to somebody. It wants to be selfish at one point. It wants to be out there at one point. It wants to be courageous at one point. It wants to be afraid at one point. Something bigger is experiencing life through me. So if you come to touching it and feeling it and understanding it more, at least you give yourself a chance. You're willing to put your old ways aside and for a few moments, give yourself a chance. And in that, you start to see the awareness is here, okay? Something is always aware, something's always present. And something is aware of these feelings of shame. Shame rises and something is aware of it that I feel shameful. Because this happened for me many, many, many times, many, many, many times that I felt shameful that I should be behaving differently than I did, that I should be thinking differently than I did. Kind of really being happy I wasn't caught on camera. But then what is it that's aware of this shameful behavior? Something is aware of it and reports it that I am ashamed of myself or I feel guilt. I'm ashamed of myself or whatever, the way I look, the way I present myself, the way, the way, why am I, why am I like this? And when will you go deeper in this teachings, your consciousness is arising to the 5D consciousness, the fifth dimensional consciousness, starting to seeing that the big kahuna, the force, is acting through the unit, acting through me, the way, because it wants to experience life. It wants to experience whatever aspect of life is, is acting through it. So simultaneously, because it's infinite, it's infinity, you know, it's, it has no limitation. 
human mind can understand it. But we have an infinite being that is acting out through each and every one of you and each and every one of us simultaneously is able to do it. So it's controlling your thoughts, controlling your emotions, controlling your behavior. Everything is being done by that. So if you understand it and go deeper, then you're off the hook. You're like, oh, I can relax. Because the results, the end game, whether you get up and do this and you don't get up and do it, is going to be the same. It's already there. But in the meantime, if it's in your programming to be someone who's active and doing it, you can't sit and not do something. You're going to get up and do it. If you're giving, if you're a person who's giving, that's your programming. You, you always want to give and help because you feel this compassion of sharing. If you're tight and stingy, you always have this feeling like you don't have enough. Your programming remains the same. But the awareness can change. It expands. Programming can change too, but it's not, it's rare. So something here is aware of shame and guilt. Something is aware of these emotions come and go. What is this thing that doesn't change is aware of self-shame or guilt? What is it that this shame is getting compared to? It has to get compared to something that doesn't change. Something that is observer, is the observer. There's an awareness here. That awareness remains the awareness. Any questions? Ms. Hilda, since you brought this up, do you have? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. I got it, I think. It was good. Now I can just relax. Anybody has any questions here? Ms. Candace. Um, yes. If this force bigger than us is creating our feelings and our thoughts, then that must be giving us the feelings of shame. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. So why is it doing that? Do you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's to experience. Experiencing things. Okay. Experiencing emotions, experiencing thoughts, experiencing thrives and failure and everything. All of it wants to be experienced through objects. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Connie. Uh, what about the free will? Yeah, that's exactly what I said. Yeah, you, but there you, is, then, then there is no free will. Right. I mean, there is the free will in the apparent world. It appears that you have free will. Yeah, but we don't have. 
Yeah, I mean, you can examine it to see if you have it or not. Yeah, but um, another thing is that uh, a kind of responsibility. Yeah. Is, is it also uh, a kind of nothing I had to to take care of or whatever? I, I have a missing link. I think that um, that it's easy to say that, yeah, I'm just acting what I'm programmed to. I mean, it's a kind of letting go of everything and not feeling that I have any responsibility for my, my life or anything. Well, can you be irresponsible from now on? Let's say you're convinced that you don't have any free will, but can you be irresponsible from now on? Is that in your programming? Are you a person who's irresponsible? I can't answer you because I don't know really. Right, okay. Have you been responsible up to this point in your life? Very much. I mean, I have, uh, I have had children and I, I have, had the feeling of a strong uh, responsibility to take care of them and to do what was in my power to do for them. So, yeah. Yeah, I get it. So, yeah, where does, well, do you know anybody who, do you have a friend or someone you know that they're kind of irresponsible and they don't really take care of things? I, I have met people who has been acting without the same um, kind of responsibility to their children. And you know, because I have been I have been working with children who has been uh, taken care of in social uh, places because that their parents couldn't do it. So right. yeah, yeah. So yes. Yeah. Right. So, what inspires you, what motivates you, and moves you to be responsible? Something is motivating you to be in that way. Yeah, sometimes it's my thinking, but but the most of the time it's a it's an inner feeling who drives me. Exactly, something yeah. something inside doesn't yeah. feel right. Yeah, something very strong in there does not feel right for you to not taking care of business. Yeah, yeah, the same thing something very strong inside the other person is is not moving him to take care of business it's just yeah. not motivating him to do it yeah yeah exactly yeah what I'm, I what I'm saying what I'm suggesting is, each and every one, if you're interested, look into that. Look at this possibility. Look at this idea of what I'm sharing with you. And examine it for yourself. Get into it and examine it and see if it has any validity. Because you have to also examine that how many times in your life you decided you're going to go in this direction and you ended up in that direction. How many times I've said, starting tomorrow, I'm not going to be smoking cigarettes. Starting tomorrow, I'm not going to be drinking coffee. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to be doing yoga. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to be going to the gym. Uh, Da, 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 you know, just the list keeps going on and on and on and on. 
And then the next day you get up, the first thing you do is you pick up the cigarette pack and smoke a cigarette or drink coffee. Exactly what you said you're not going to do. Or, I don't know, it's like I'm meeting a lot of people and say, oh, yeah, you know, I wanted to go travel the world and do this and that. But then, you know, I got pregnant at age 18 and I ended up staying in my little town, uh, marrying the high school sweetheart and having three kids by age 26. And I didn't do anything that I wanted to do or didn't live my dreams or whatever. How many times you've met people or yourself that you wanted to go in this direction and you ended up in this place. And I look at myself because that's my own point of reference. And it's full of stories that I was trying to go here and I ended up here. I wanted to do this and I ended up doing this. And having five near-death experiences, something much bigger has saved me through all the craziness of myself that I've experienced of being crazy and doing crazy things. Something has just wanted me to carry on and not end the life of this unit for some reason. I don't know why. I can't figure out why, and it doesn't matter, but something wants this unit to continue doing what it's doing and not end it. Believe me, it had opportunities to end it. Yeah. Yet, there is a sense that you're the personal, of the personal authorship. There's a sense that we have that we're the one who are making the choices and we're the cause. There's a sense in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And I understand what you're saying, yeah. And believe me, I've experienced both, both sides of parts of saying, oh, I'm not the doer and so whatever, and being reckless or doing whatever, not being considerate, not paying attention, uh, not being loving, being an asshole, being abusive, whether with myself or other people, and, and using the teachings as a cop-out. And that also is a part of it. You may, have, you may go through it. But ultimately, everything comes back to one place. Is that if the unit, its conditioning, its programming, its DNA is to be in a set way, like being responsible and, or semi-responsible, or it's clean, or it's tidy, or whatever, it's gonna continue its programming. But liberation comes in the recognition, in the realization that there is no personal, and you cannot become liberated and become free and realized as long as you believe or you're operating from this place that you are the one who's doing things and you're separated from the entire existence. As long as you have that mindset, you are not gonna awaken because how can you be separated from the entire existence and you can just call the shots on your own. 
everything you do is depending on everything else in life. Everything you do. Every moment of life that you're living, it's all depending on everything else in your surrounding. So you don't have control on your surrounding. You don't have control on the weather. You don't have control on the politics, on, on the economy. You, don't, you have no control over any of those things. And yet they're affecting you. So this thing coming, the more you're awakened, the more you're coming to this place, the more you start to see this, the more you're rising, your consciousness is expanding, you're waking up, the more you realize the recognition comes that I'm not in control of anything. Yet, you're still going to do according to your programming the things that you, you're doing. Being clean, being responsible, pay your bills, return phone calls, or being a flake and not doing it, whatever is your program. But this mind chattering or mind, mind fucking starts to go away or being observed at least. If it doesn't go away, you are becoming aware of it. So when you do something stupid or shameful or that creates guilt, you have done it. Now you're feeling guilty, but you're aware that you're feeling guilty. You're not identifying with being guilty. You are aware of the guilt. You're aware of it that it's here. But you're not identifying with it. You're experiencing it like any other emotion or thoughts, but you're not identifying with it that it's you. You're simply aware of it. Hi, Kamala. Welcome back. Nice to see you. Anybody has anything to say, share, questions? We are going to do the shamanic healing circle that uh, I was supposed to be doing it last month. Um, as soon as I put the studio back together and and all the equipments are working, uh, I'm going to make I'm going to make an announcement on the date. So uh, I'm not flaking out on that. It's going to be coming, but I don't know when. I just have to make sure that the studio is set so we can broadcast it correctly. Inshallah, God willing, if it wants. So, yeah, I mean, it's this is another interesting thing. Like, okay, I migrated to Mexico and then uh, try to put this studio together and it you... Those of you who've been with me, it never happened. I neither had a quiet place that I could broadcast from nor uh, write internet. So, and there was nothing 
I could do. I did the best I could, but it wouldn't happen. It didn't want to happen. Something much bigger was at, at work. And now here we are. Something, when it's not happening, it's not happening. When it's happening, it's happening. You start seeing it. You start recognizing it. And you just kind of go with it. Recognizing of the ties of life. Oh, okay, the energy is there. Now it's happening. Now it's picking you up. It's taking you. And you're going with it. Or recognizing it like, okay, it's not there. You know, I get up every morning. I'm trying to jumpstart this thing, but it's not really happening. It's not there. There's no juice, no energy. That's how it is. Because there's nothing you can do about it when it's happening. When the energy comes and it's full on and you're energetic and you're full of ideas and you're inspired and you have this and it's just pouring out of you, nothing in existence can stop you. And then when it's not there, nothing you can do to make it happen. It's just not happening. So when you recognize that in your life, it's a recognition of these ties, of these movements of something is going to get you going. So Inner peace comes, you become peaceful with it, and you just roll with it till, till it comes and it's happening, rather than beating yourself up or, or shaming yourself or feeling guilty that, why aren't I doing this? Or I'm supposed to be doing this, or I'm supposed to be here in this stage in my life, and why I'm not there? Why am I here? of recognition of you're exactly where you're supposed to be. You're exactly the way you're supposed to look. You're exactly the way you're supposed to uh, be economically or everything is exactly the will of God, the will of consciousness, everything exactly the way the one wants, the boss, her majesty, the supreme being, the supreme soul. You may come and say, well, you know, I had a son. He got in a car accident at age 42. He was brain surgeon and he was successful and had a beautiful wife and two kids and why did God take him out at that age and then someone else goes till age 110 nothing happens to them we don't understand the infinite the infinite is experiencing through every unit, every single object that exists is a manifestation of it. It's an experience of it. But we'll just talk about human beings right now. So human beings, the only animal or object on this dimension capable of thinking and feeling, capable of self-inquiry. He's asking questions, he's looking inside, he's curious, he's capable of doing it. But still an object, still an expression. 
an expression of the absolute. And a few human beings on this planet throughout the history went through a process of self-recognition, self-realization that they realized that their nature was that. They realized that there is no them, there's no person, there's not a unit separated, but actually is the manifestation and the expression of that. That's, well, the stage that the sage has arrived. Of that recognition, that there's self-realization of God is the only thing that there is is operating through everything. So then what happens is the vision changes because you start seeing it as the one that appears as many. You begin to, as the one, the one that appears as many. There's only one. It's appearing as so many different ones. It's an appearance. All the objects appear and disappear. They all have time limitation. Every object that you encounter, it's got a time, time period. It appears and it disappears. It's never going to be there all the time. Nobody is going to be with you all the time. Even you are not going to stay the same all the time. Except your awareness, that part of you which is watching, everything else is changing all the time. Nothing remains the same. All objects, they appear and they disappear. They simply appear on consciousness and then they disappear in consciousness. Look at the past history of mankind. All these, the Roman Empire, the Persian Empire, the Mongol Empire, you know, they all appeared and disappeared. The British Empire. Everything rises and falls. It's all have a time duration. Nothing is going to stay the same and permanently there, except one thing. Everything else comes and goes. It's an appearance. It's all temporary. So if you recognize that, then maybe you don't really try to hang on to it so dearly. You enjoy it when it's happening, but you also understand that it's going to disappear at one point. So then you can really stay with it when it's happening, whatever that is, whether it's pleasant or it's painful. But you realize that that too is going to pass. It's going to change. So in that case, you can't take anything for granted. None of it you can take for granted. You can, I can't take you for granted. 
you can take me for granted. We can take this academy for granted. We can't take our internet for granted. We can't take anything for granted. We can't take whatever little freedom is left in this life for granted or appears to be free. Your health, your family, your friends, your children, your parents. Nothing could be taken for granted because everything is got a time limitation. It will be like this now and then it disappears. So what do you want to do with it? Do we want to sit down and dwell in the past and keep beating yourself up or talking about how great things were or you just want to really dive into what is here now? without any projection of the future. Just dive into the moment here. What's here now is the only thing exists. There's a lot right now. Kamala, my dear, how are you doing? Hi, Zarathustra. Hi. You know, I, I owe you an apology because you had sent us a couple emails. Oh. And you, yeah, and Amir forwards them to me. And what happens is I answer you back, but I didn't realize I emailed myself. <laughs> okay. So twice I have answered you, and both times it was through a forward. The message was forwarded to me. Oh. And I emailed myself. So the other day, I was just going through a lot of my emails, just looking at stuff and wondering, how come I never heard back from you? And then I realized because I never emailed you. So, well, we're all one. Yeah. So please. Accept <laughs> yeah. So it made me realize that I can't email somebody I mean, I can't. I have to copy paste their email and put it up there and then put the content in there, not through if something gets forwarded to me. So, anyway, oh. just wanted to let you know that's why you didn't hear back from me. Well, thanks. Yeah, thanks. But I email you back now. I'm glad I saw you because I forgot about it till I saw you today. Okay. Yeah, well, that's very nice to hear and all in divine timing and yeah so i think it's funny you said you emailed yourself yeah emailed each other um you know i love this song with uh, michael jackson uh you're just another part of me i love the lyrics right i i, I don't recall that song but i can look it up you're just another part of me. Da, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. You want to you wanna sing more? <laughs> <laughs> that's, Go for it. that's good. Yeah. Okay. Well, nice to see you. Are you in Denmark? Yes. Where, where in Denmark are you residing? Oh, it's such a beautiful place uh, in uh, Jutland near Greno. It's called Sangstrup. It's okay. in the ocean and there is a cliff, like white cliffs. It's just so beautiful. I just moved here with my children. And okay. find yeah, right. really a new, new existence. And yeah, lots of new. Right. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. So you are welcome anytime. It's so beautiful. Really. Well, thank you. Thank you. I look forward to the day I can travel back to Europe freely. Yeah. yeah. Yes. We are hoping for this opening. Yeah. Nice for all of us. Yeah. Because I was just sitting in, um, I have like a pavilion in the garden. And I was just sitting there doing a little meditation and a little sounding. And I was like, yeah, you know, we just need to gather all of us. And I was seeing Pia and Christina and everyone. And it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it would be lovely. Yep. So yeah. as soon as everything opens back up, you yeah. Inshallah. Inshallah. We have to see what the boss wants. Yes. <laughs> because the boss is the one who created the whole thing. So um so we'll we'll see. We we shall see. I'm very open to it. True. All right. Well, it's nice to see you, honey. Welcome yeah. back. You always you know you're always welcome. Yeah, and I, I, thanks. And I, I watch uh, the seminars, the webinars I can. I watch them on YouTube and I'm here when I can and yeah. Right. I chose yeah. the blessing of motherhood in this life. So it's like, you know, when I can. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, that's your that's your karma and yeah. that's your path. That's that's what you're supposed to be doing and you're doing a good job. To the best of your ability, you're doing what you can. Yeah. And learning a lot about unconditional love. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, nice to have you, sweetheart. Welcome. Cool. Anybody, uh, any comments? Anyone wants to share anything? You have anything to, sh to say? Let's see. Miss Linda. Hello. Is this our Linda from, hello, Linda. Hello, hello. This is the, the Linda from, from oh, Sweden, yes. <laughs> Hi. So, Hi. Nice, nice to have you. Yes, nice to have you. This was very interesting to, to listen today. Okay. Uh, I am uh, like in both sides right now. I have uh, health issues which is very, very hard for me. And also I have success with my art, which is, which is very, very happy for me. So I'm like both high in the sky and <laughs> feeling a bit bad. So, yeah, I just yeah, have to... I, yeah, I, well, you're doing a good job. Yeah, I do my best. Yeah, you're definitely doing doing a great job. I'm so glad you sent me your beautiful art. I I yeah. read uh, everything you sent me that how you've been discovered and and uh, your yeah. art is doing. Yeah, there's a lots of fear. I don't have fear in the same way anymore. Uh, before I got sick, I was scared of everything, and after I was sick, I. I just thought I have to do everything I dream of. I have to try. I will not stop myself. Uh, I just do, 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 do. And wow, it happens so much to me. Yeah, it is great. I. It's very inspiring. It's in the same time, it does reaffirm for me, like... Um, Consciousness, God, is the only thing there is. And yeah. when existence wants something to happen, because of course, like anyone, you know, the thought comes, the, the yeah. you know, is, is this happening? Is this what I'm going to be doing the rest of my life? Or should I continue doing this? Mm -hmm. uh, or there are times like, oh, I don't feel like doing this anymore. Mm -hmm thought comes the feeling comes and you're, you're either inspired or not inspired and then always falling back into this place that you're going to end up doing and you will be doing what the big boss big kahuna wants you to do mm -hmm. and falling back into this place is so relieving and also observing like existence you know you you had your health issue challenges and while that happened then life opened up same force that created that challenge created this other opportunity that your art is flying and yes amazing exposure and it's kind of like 
you can kind of see like you didn't do anything about it in some ways. It just happened. Yes, it happened. And when it happened, I'm not scared. I don't care what people think. I don't put myself down. It's so different before. I would do totally different before. But right. now I just go with the flow and I'm happy, I'm proud, and I just enjoy the ride. Exactly. Exactly. So something in you has eased up. Yes. You shifted from trying to be in control or trying to be perfect all the time or everything's got to be right to a letting go. Yes. Of whatever, you know. I mean, I do the best I can do, but the results, they're, they're not in my hands. Hmm. And I can yes. present to the best of my ability. This is, this is the best I can do at this moment. Yes. Yeah, whatever is going to be, it's going to be. That's wonderful. Just stay in this place. Stay in this place of trust. Yeah, lots of trust, trust, trust. Yeah. I have been in trust for a long time. Yeah, beautiful. I'm, I'm very happy for, for you. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. I'm happy too. I'm very happy too. Yeah, you're doing, you're doing a great job. This is a great challenge you're going through in life, but something very good things are coming out of it and you're just going to grow stronger and, and, and go deeper and be more and become much larger and bigger yeah. so keep on going forward and keep connected my dear sister yeah thank you thank yeah, you nice talking to you and hello to everybody i see you here on my screen <laughs> all beautiful people uh -huh. all right so Anything else? Anyone? Great. Um, our next academy is going to be next week, next Wednesday. Uh, as I mentioned, I don't have any programs uh, planned um, at this point, except just doing our academy. Um, Nothing has really inspired me uh, to come up with anything new. And uh, when it wants to happen, it's going to happen. And uh, I have to say I'm very happy. I'm, I'm back. I got to see my family. I missed my family, missed my friends. Um, it's very... Uh, interesting uh it's kind of like a deja vu or kind of it's it's a very interesting experience it's like uh i'm back at something i said goodbye to and it's like like is this really happening and it's kind of like time traveling that you went into another dimension and all of a sudden you're back into this other dimension it's it's a very very interesting sensations and experience like you know what is this so we're going to continue doing the academy uh, next week you're going to receive the video of this academy uh, my pages are all zaratustra 5d uh, my email is info at zarathustra.tv uh, and my website is zarathustra.tv. I am um, winding down on offering the, the um, live training program, but I'm open to pick up one or two students. If anybody's inspired, uh, feel free, write an email to me and we'll set up a 
consultation appointment with you. Kamala, I will contact you and we'll do that. I know you contacted me and uh, I'll get back to you. And um, basically it. I'm open to suggestions. If you have any suggestions, please write it to me. And uh, let's see where things are gonna go. What's gonna transpire? What's gonna reveal itself in all of our lives? What's in the store? which starts with right now. Right now is the moment. And do not sacrifice right now for anything else. Be aware of your mind keep going to the past or your mind wanting to go to the future. And then it sacrifices, sacrifices this moment. Come back into this. And in this, when you're examining it, here, you will see like nothing is missing in this moment when you come back here. You hang out in this moment, you realize, wow, everything is exactly the way it needs to be. Nothing needs to be any different. You can examine it for yourself. But this is where the juice is. Master this. And you will see that it leaks into the next moment and next moment. And it frees you from this chatter. Because this chatter, this stuff is either about the past or it's projecting the past into the future constantly. So when you master this and you learn to hang out here, mind quiets down. It takes you deep into a very still, quiet state within yourself. And in that still, quiet state that you go, you realize you start feeling the juice. You start feeling the love. Because the juice, the love, is here. You can't find it in a projected future and you can't find it in the past. It's here. So hang out in this place. You hear the chatter, the stuff is gonna come and go. It's constantly gonna come and go. Just kind of be ignorant to it. And then dive into the juice. Enjoy it. While you're in this body, while you're alive in this dimension for how much, whatever more minutes you have, dive into the self-love and juice, which is here and enjoy that. Or however moments that you can before, if you have a strong mind, maybe your mind is pulled into the news or you the past or your family or affairs or blah 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 all this stuff but come back come back here and just hang out with this one and recognize that and enjoy that and then everything else disappears okay sending you my love and light thank you for being in my life thank you for being an inspiration to me. I appreciate it. And look forward to seeing you soon. Namaste. Much love.